Solo game dev in 2024 is both the easiest thing to do and the hardest thing to do. And if you know my story, I was a solo dev for almost 10 years, and I don't think there's ever been so much change happening in the industry since I started. I know Flash ended and that was a huge deal, but the landscape is just evolving so rapidly right now. There has been so much change from AI to Unity issues to just layoffs across the board when it comes to the industry. It's crazy. And when there's so much change, there's learning curves and learning curves can lead to roadblocks and roadblocks can lead to hardships. And this is detrimental to a game developer. And when you're solo, it's heightened to 11. Game dev in 2024 is full of opportunities and also pitfalls. And being prepared for that all will be the difference between success and failure. So that's what we're jumping into today. Here are my eight tips, my tricks, my pieces of advice to prepare you for 2024 and beyond. Be sure to stick around for the last one because it kind of ties it all together, but here we go. First one we're starting with is setting clear goals. Nothing can hang you up more is when you are directionless and you just are unsure about what your next steps are. Taking the time to plan them out and have a detailed list of what needs to take place can mean the difference between taking the first step on a project and putting it to the side for later, which you might not even get to. A great software for, that you could use for this is a thing called Trello. There's another one called Miro. Both of these are great project managers. They can help you set clear goals. They can also help you with time management, which if you marry those two together, you can just get so much more done. Even if you're just getting one thing done a day, seeing those things being completed feels amazing and will make you want to do more. Just remember, it's not about doing work. It's about making sure you're getting work done when you are working. So make sure you're setting clear goals. Next one might be kind of scary. Start a YouTube channel. Starting a YouTube channel will prepare you in ways that you were not expecting for the future of your game dev career. It's talking in front of a camera, documenting progress, putting yourself out there in maybe an uncomfortable way. YouTube will push your limits to places you didn't expect you could even go and it'll give you a confidence that you can't find many other places. Don't let it scare you and let it help you. And not only in that confidence way that I mentioned before, use it as a way to document your progress in your game development journey. And then what's really cool with YouTube is you will build a community around yourself without even really trying it. And that community will become invaluable in the future when you want to actually sell your game. YouTube and game dev, they just go together like milk and cookies. I almost want to say you need one, but you don't. It's just super helpful and it can really push you in ways you might have not expected. Third tip is keep on learning, keep on exploring, keep on asking questions, even where it doesn't make sense. Keep exploring. Like I said, the landscape of game development is changing like crazy right now. And for those people that took chances or decided to learn where it didn't really make sense for them at that time, they had a leading edge on that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying to like waste your time on things that don't make sense for you, but don't be afraid to look at things in a new light sometimes. Using Unity as an example, don't be afraid to look at Unreal and what they have to offer from time to time. People are constantly releasing content updates and some of those things might fit your journey. It might help you in ways that you hadn't expected if you didn't take the time to look. So always be looking for new opportunities. And that actually leads me to my next tip, which might be a little controversial, but use AI. What do I mean by use AI? Let it help you. Be careful how you use it. I really wouldn't recommend using art. Things like ChatGPT and Midjourney can really help fill in the gaps in your creation timeline. If you need to come up with a quick dialogue system in ChatGPT, just ask it and it'll help you figure that out. If you need to bring up some concept art or put some images to some ideas, go to Midjourney. Use them to lift you up and make the process easier. There's no shame in speeding up the development process as long as it's your idea coming to life. Because those who use AI to help them on their journey are going to get to the finish line way faster in most cases. And during this time where AI is flooding everything and there's just so much generic looking AI cringe stuff, people want to see your ideas. And they're only going to see your ideas if you finish them. And AI can help you finish them. They shouldn't be the end result, but they can help you bring your ideas to life like I mentioned. So use it to help you. 
My tip number five is avoid isolation. In my close to 10 years of solo development, I didn't talk to anybody about it. And you know how many projects I finished during that time? Zero. Talking to others in communities like Discord or even Reddit or Facebook is a great way to just get accountability and just talk with others about a very nuanced subject like game development. Discord has countless communities where you can talk with other people and I recommend downloading it right now if you haven't because it's fantastic to be able to talk to people that way. And I know it might feel weird to do this as well because it was definitely weird for me, but talk to friends and family. Having people in real life to talk to is also fantastic to have because you can always just turn off the internet and not look at it. But if you have a friend coming over or a family member coming over and they just ask you about something, you kind of have to talk about it. And sometimes it's really easy not to talk about something you're passionate about, which is very strange, but it happens. So talk to others about it because it'll help you on your journey and will help you complete stuff and make that solo journey less isolating. Tip number six might be my favorite tip. Do game jams. Even if you have like your dream game that you're working on and it's like coming together, still do game jams. Game jams are a incubator for good ideas. They flex the right muscles for completing games and getting ideas on paper, get you talking to other people, build friendships with those people sometimes, and you're just doing what you love. It's making games and finishing them, hopefully. I love jams so much just because they take you through every process pretty much of the game development process. And if you do that enough times, you're gonna get better at that process. So when it comes time to actually make your dream game, you're gonna know how to do it. And then factor in just meeting people and communicating with the development community. It is just a priceless thing that I feel like everybody kind of just glosses over. Use game jams for what they really can be used for, and that is flexing every muscle of game development. From actually developing, to communicating with others, to releasing games, and kind of even marketing them, where you just want to tell people about it. I've said it like three times now, but jams flex every muscle, and we want to do that as much as possible. So go do them. They're so much fun, and kind of stressful sometimes. But it's worth it, because game development is stressful sometimes. So just, yeah. I get passionate about game de- or game jams, so go do them. You got it. Getting fired up about number six, let's jump to number seven. Use free tools. There's so many of them. There's so many free tools out there. I made a video about it. There's like a bunch of videos about the free tools, but you really should not be in a position where you have to spend a lot of money. If you want to make pixel art, Piscal is a good one. A Sprite, you do have to pay a little bit of money, but it's like 20 bucks kind of worth it. I've heard a lot of people say, I don't use it, but I use Piscal. Blender's free and it's like the state of the art. Like everybody uses Blender. And if you are having a YouTube channel, DaVinci Resolve is what I use. And it's like they make movies with DaVinci Resolve and it's free. All the things I just mentioned, free. And that's just software. Go on the Unity Asset Store if you do use Unity and there are hundreds of free assets for you to use. They can cut your development time down and help you release games faster, which is what we all want to do. I just thought of another one, Audacity. Audacity is, it's old, but it works so well for a audio editing software. OBS, another fantastic software that's completely free. I could go on and on about all the free software out there, but before you buy something, make sure you look to see if there's a free version of it somewhere, because I'm sure there is. Again, I made a video about this, so I'll link it in the description or maybe put a card here. I can do that now, I think. I'll put a card somewhere around here. And you can check out that video and look at all the free stuff that's out there because there's just so much and it'll speed up your development time and you don't have to waste the pen. I know when I was a solo developer, the last thing I wanted to do, like I just mentioned, was spend money. So yeah, I was pinching pennies. So yeah, use the free stuff. So my tip number eight, it's probably going to confuse you all and maybe even make you a little bit mad, but find a team. Don't be a solo developer. What do I mean by this one? Let people help you. I know for me, when I was a solo developer, I didn't want anyone to help me. I wanted it to be all from me. And like I said, how many projects did I complete? Zero. When we allow others to help us, it allows us to do things that we love to do. And it allows others to do what they love to do. And at the end of the day, it creates better project. In most cases. I'm not saying you have to find a team to work long term with. 
But when we allow others to help us, it again flexes those muscles of community and builds everybody up. I obviously understand that it's hard to talk to other people sometimes, especially when we're talking about a product that we love so much. My voice is dying. But what I've learned over the past year, year and a half, is that when we allow others to help us, it allows us to do more, like start a YouTube channel, like do more Game Jam games. And that's how it ties everything together. When we allow others to help us, when we maybe create a team of people that we can trust, of real people that we can trust, not like people that we've bickered with, and when we really have a team of people that we can trust, it makes all the difference because you share the load, and the load is heavy. There is so much to do in game development, and it is a Herculean task to do it all alone. And we don't need to do it alone. We can let others help us, and we should. So that's my last tip. Don't be a solo developer. Allow others to help you. How dare I say that? It's one of the key lessons I feel like I've learned over the past few months. So those are my tips. Those are all eight of my tips. I hope they're helpful, but so much has changed over a short amount of time, I feel like. And I can't even begin to think about what the next few years are gonna hold because with how easy it is to make games, there's gonna be a flood of new games and only the games that come from our hearts are gonna stick out. And I think that's what matters. I think that's what we all would want anyway. There is an incredible amount of potential out there if we allow ourselves to obtain it. I hope these tips helped you guys. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your tips. I'm, I'm, I would love to hear them. But until next week, keep on chasing that dream and I will see you then.